Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Glacier Ear Warmer, which you can see here in front of you. Now this is an easy ear warmer to make. I did work it up in the twisted design, but if you choose not to work the twist, you're welcome to do that as well. You'll just have a seam of the side. This is the first pattern in the midwinter crochet along. If you are joining me for that, welcome. And if not, you can find all of the details about the midwinter crochet along uh, in the description of this video. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around. You'll find lots of free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. For the Glacier Ear Warmer today, we're going to be working it using the Lion Brand Scarfy Yarn. This is a ball of it here. It's a bulky weight yarn, an acrylic wool blend, and uh, it has absolutely beautiful colors, so this is the one I'm working with. If uh, you're going to substitute, or you are working with smaller amounts of the scarfy yarn, you're going to need about 100 yards to complete the ear warmer pattern. You're also going to need a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and links to both of these items can be found in the description of the video. Also in the description of the video you will find a direct link to the free written pattern which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. Our pattern today is worked in rows. We're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain your foundation chain will need to be a total of 60 chains. Now if you would like to change the size of your ear warmer uh, the 60 chains will give you a slightly larger size than what would fit an adult head about 20 to 22 inches. So if you're looking to change the size, uh, there's no particular multiple needed. You can simply chain to the desired length to fit the circumference of your head uh, and then add a little bit extra because the twist does require a little bit more room and the chain will uh, shorten as you're working into it. So go ahead, chain 60. Once you have chained 60, you're going to begin row 1 by working a half double crochet into the second chain from your hook. So count in 1, 2, into that second chain, work 1 half double crochet. You're then going to continue to work half double crochet stitches in each chain stitch all the way across. At the end of row one, chain one and turn your work. We're now going to work two rows of half double crochet stitches that are worked into the third loop. So to find the third loop of your stitch, we're now looking at the back of our half double crochet and you're going to see sort of two horizontal bars coming across. You have your top loop here that you'd normally work under and then underneath of it you have another loop. This lower loop, the one that's below your top loops, is your third loop. So you're going to work your half double crochet stitches into these loops all the way across and this is going to push the top of your stitches forward. So I'll show you uh, what that looks like. So half double crochet, inserting your hook under that third loop, and you're going to work a half double crochet into each stitch all the way across. So I'm just working under these third loops all the way across 
and I'll take a moment, I'll show you what the front of my work is now looking like. You'll see this ridge that almost looks like it's knit going across the front of your work. So continue to work those half double crochet stitches in the third loop of each stitch all the way across. And this is for row two. At the end of row two, you'll chain one and turn your work and you should now see the tops of your stitches running along the front side here. We're going to work for row three another row of half double crochet stitches in our third loops. This time when we're working them they're going to look a little bit differently. So what we want is we want the top of our stitches to come to the front to the front again and in order to do that the loop that we're going to work under is in a slightly different place. So this is the front of our work turning our work over look at the back of your work you have this horizontal bar this loop your top loop coming along here then just under it and it's not quite running alongside it it might be a little bit more vertical is the third loop. Each of your stitches have one and again it can be a little bit tricky but it gets easier as you go along. So you're going to work a half double crochet working under that third loop only and these are all found at the back of your work and this is going to push the top forward in the same direction as the row below. So work your half double crochets in the third loop of each stitch all the way across. At the end of row three this is what your work looks like. You're going to chain one and turn your work. We're now going to work one more row of half double crochet stitches in the third loop. This time our third loop is easy to see again and it's uh, right here in front. And so you're just going to work one half double crochet stitch into each stitch all the way across. At the end of row four, you've chained one and turned your work. We're now going to work our first row of herringbone single crochet stitches. So to begin row five, you're going to start by working a single crochet into that first stitch. It's just a normal single crochet. This will set you up for working your herringbone stitches. You're going to then work a herringbone single crochet in each stitch all the way across. To work your first single crochet herringbone stitch, you're going to insert your hook under the vertical bar of the post of the single crochet you just made. So I have my hook under my loop. I'm going to insert my hook under the bar on the post of the single crochet just made and then into under both loops of the next stitch. Yarn over, draw up a loop, there'll be three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. That's your first herringbone single crochet. You're going to continue those all the way across so again, insert your hook under that vertical bar of the post of the stitch you just worked. Then under both loops of the next stitch in your row, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. Continue to work those stitches 
all the way across. At the end of row five, you're going to chain one and turn your work. You now have the wrong side of your work facing. And we're going to work a few more rows of herringbone stitches. But because the wrong side of our work is facing, for this next row, row six, we're going to work some reverse stitches. You're going to start row six by working a reverse single crochet into that first stitch. So there's a few things that I do when I'm working these reverse stitches. First is you want to bring your yarn in front of your work. Second, normally when I work in a stitch, I have my hook kind of facing toward me. When I work my reverse stitches, I find it easier if my hook is facing toward the back. It just makes it a little bit easier to bring the yarn through. So what we're going to do is work our reverse single crochet into the first stitch. To work the reverse single crochet, you're going to bring your hook and back, insert your hook under both loops, yarn over or grab a hold of that yarn and pull it through. Two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two. We're now going to work one reverse herringbone stitch in each stitch all the way across. To work the reverse single, bone, uh, single herringbone stitch, you'll want to take a look at the back of your work where you will see those same vertical bars in the posts of your previous stitch. So this time you want to bring your hook and back and insert it into that post, under that post, and then into the next stitch working under both loops again from the back to the front. Yarn over, grab that yarn, pull it through, three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. I'll show you the next reverse herringbone stitch. So again, at the back of your work, which is actually the right side of your work, insert your hook under that vertical bar of your stitch post, and then from back to front of the next stitch under both loops, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. So continue working all of those reverse herringbone stitches all the way across. At the end of row six, chain one and turn your work. You should be seeing that herringbone stitch pattern coming out in your last two rows. Now for rows six, uh, or sorry, seven and eight, you're going to repeat rows five and six. So work one row of herringbone stitches and then one row of reverse herringbone stitches and then meet me back here at the end of your row eight. Once you come to the end of row eight, chain one, turn your work. And this is what your work should look like so far. You'll have four rows of the herringbone stitch and you're now ready to start row nine. For row 9, chain 1 and turn your work and you're simply going to work one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. At the end of row 9, chain 1, turn your work. 
For rows 10, 11, and 12, you're going to work half double crochets in the third loop just as you did at the beginning of the pattern. So you're simply working a half double crochet in the third loop in each stitch all the way across, chain one, turn your work, and work the half double crochets in the third loop once again. Work three rows of half double crochets in the third loop for rows 10, 11, and 12. And then meet me back here and we will finish off our twisted ear warmer. At the end of round 12, this is what the back side of your work looks like. And then the front side. You'll have finished off with some half double crochets in the third loop. You're then going to fasten off, leaving a long tail. Next, we're going to fold our ear warmer together uh, to make the twist. So you're going to want your right side facing. And then taking your yarn needle, just weave the end of the yarn through. Now taking each of the shorter ends of your ear warmer, you're going to gather them in your hand and fold them so that you have two U-shapes facing one another. You're then going to slide these two pieces together and have the layers so that they are layered A, B, A, C. You have the right sides, so the front side of your ear warmer are facing one another on each end. Then taking your yarn needle, being sure to work through all four thicknesses of your ear warmer, you're going to sew the ends together. So just take your yarn, work it in and out, bringing these together, making sure you're working through all four pieces, all the way across. When you come across to the other end, you will want to secure it because you don't want this coming apart as you're wearing it. And then weave in your ends. Fasten off. Turn your ear warmer right side out. And you should have your twist there in the front. And that's all there is to working our Glacier Ear Warmer. So thank you so much for joining me. Again, Once you're while you're here, I invite you to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye. Mm -hmm.